It's time for our Seen and Unseen segment, where we expose the big stories behind the headlines. Joining us with all the details, Raymond Arroyo, Fox News contributor, author of the forthcoming book, The Spider Who Saved Christmas. Raymond, Joe Biden hit the trail today. He was down to was Miami. Yeah. Yes, he was. He was trying to shore up his Hispanic support that has been lax in the last few weeks. Upon landing, Jill Biden had to redirect the candidate, reminding him as he spoke about COVID science to social distance from reporters, Laura. Note the aggressive caretaker tactic here. Listen to the science. The scientists say that... I'm sorry. The scientists say that it's safe, the distance is safe. Like a well-trained orderly, she just pulls him right back. Then while at a Haitian cultural center, Laura, the Biden campaign did something very interesting. Lacking the backdrop of actual enthusiastic supporters, Biden stood before a mural of painted enthusiastic Haitians. Given that the president was battling COVID, his message wandered off course. Wouldn't it be an irony, the irony of all ironies, if on election eve, it turned out Haitians delivered the coup de grace in this election. I want to see these beautiful young ladies. I want to see them dancing when they're four years old or two. Why, why he wants to see girls dancing in four years, I don't know. I'm going to leave that aside. But a coup de grace is a death blow, Laura. Imagine if Biden were fighting COVID and Trump urge a coup de grace on election eve. This is so bizarre. It's almost as bizarre as the focus on the Haitian dancing girls. I don't understand. What, what word was he looking for there? What I was, do not know. He tried to go all French on us and he kind of, <laughs> that was a little Biden, yeah. whatever. All right. Biden also did a, an NBC town hall tonight and he was back to his old self. Oh, yeah. 10 million, 210,000 people have died. If you put this mask on between now and January, you'll save 100. I mean, he said we, it's more important than a virus, than, excuse me, than a vaccine. You know people have had COVID. I'm, I hope you, I'd be, I'd be wonderful you didn't. And I learned how to fight. I got a nickname. They called me shoe leather. I was little, but they could beat me up, but they hurt, I hurt them in the process. Laura, Laura, now we've got more nicknames. Shoe leather. This is like corn pop. Maybe they joined armband to form a band <laughs> called Bottle Top. I mean, I can't follow any of this. But without the two minute limitations of a debate, you see what happens. Well, you see why Trump can't or shouldn't interrupt him too much, because yeah. otherwise we're losing all of these new characters. I mean, who's going to who's going to star? <laughs> right. Who's going to star in the recurring series? <laughs> Biden Laura, Abbey. It's like Biden's been watching West Side Story on a loop on Netflix. Anyway, uh, we have to talk about the overly dramatic media reaction to the president daring to get in his car and drive by Trump supporters at Walter Reed the other day. You would have sworn he was blowing COVID from the tailpipe as he drove by. He is putting the lives of Secret Service agents at risk. I want to ask you about the drive-by. Did the president needlessly put Secret Service officers at risk for this photo op? Well, he wore a mask. That makes the risk actually very, very small. I'm watching that car, the parade yesterday with him in the car. That was right out of a dictator's playbook, you know? Parade the dictator around so that the world and America, can, the country can see that he's still alive and he's still robust. Laura, do you remember any of this pushback or outrage from Joy Behar or anybody else when the Obamas routinely drove through New York or D.C. on date nights? Remember, they'd lock down whole sections of the city. Nobody said the dictator's going to dinner. That's the democratically elected president going to a parent-teacher's conference or a meeting. Now it's Castro on the Potomac. I've never seen anything like it. But, but they're running out of analogies, right? They're like going back to <laughs> czarist Russia. They're going back to Mussolini. I mean, they're going, they're trying desperately to, and they're, meanwhile, they're the ones who want everyone locked down while their friends get to, to flit off to their vacation homes okay so who are the dictators now they're always projecting their crap on the rest of us and Laura, don't you love how the, the, the doctor is contradicting the anchor who's trying to say, oh, it's terrible, he's spreading COVID to the Secret Service. They're masked yeah. up and they have a divider in the car. I mean, uh, but 
talking of spreading COVID from a sealed car, okay, there was zero media critique <laughs> of Mayor Lori Lightfoot of Chicago, Laura, who appeared at a presser last week dressed as something called Rona Destroyer. But oh as my. she passed out candy to the reporters, she's touching their hands, presumably. Maybe they should call her Rona Dispenser. And I love the pose at the end. I hope we can pull this up. She and her confrere there, who was also dressed up in a Clorox outfit, they posed. Marvel Comics had better make some space. We got a new movie for you. There they are, the Rona oh. Destroyers. Well she, <laughs> well, she had rubber, big rubber gloves. They look like dishwashing gloves, like green ones. That was... I mean, well, that doesn't than, help if you're touching everybody's hand, Laura, from person to person. Keeps you pure, but everybody else has it. I'm sure she never touches her face. Everyone touches their mask all the time. Just admit it. If you wear a mask, you touch your face. Okay, yep. it's impossible not right. to. And, and from, from the president to Biden to ev everybody touches their face with a mask. And it defeats the, a lot of the purpose of the mask. All right, Raymond, great to see you tonight.